Hey everyone, I wanted to create a tutorial on how to export um, diffuse texture, displacement texture, and normal map out of ZBrush. I also wanted to talk about cavity map and ambient occlusion because those five maps we are going to use to some degree um, to composite a, a finished game texture in Photoshop. So let's get going here. I've got this um, poly painted head loaded up and uh, I've got colorize on. I'll turn colorize off by clicking on this paintbrush um, just to prove that I've got polygons painted on the surface there. Let's go down here and first place I want to go to is UV map and um, notice that I've got this set up for 2048. I can click 1024, 4096. These are the presets and, and this is the size of the map that I'm going to be making when I come down here to texture, displacement, and normal. So I'm going to create all three of these and it's going to be to what I set here in the UV map rollout. Also have the amount of padding around the UV shells uh, set to four right here. Okay, so let's see, um, number one, you got to have UVs on this m on your subtool to make this work. So I'll just click new from UV map and just verification that the UVs are there. We, we're not seeing any horizontal or vertical lines. We're not seeing any errors in the UVs and they work just fine. Okay, let me turn that off and let's press new from polypaint and this is going to create a texture based off the polygon color that I have polypainted on the surface of this sculpt. Uh, this sculpt has 11 million point three 11.3 million polygons, and so that density is, is really reflected in my level 8 subdivision. Okay, once we get it in here, we can press clone texture that populates the texture tray over here. And if I want to flip it vertically, because remember ZBrush does that to textures, I can go up here to the texture drop down menu and flip vertically. I'll handle that in Photoshop, so I'm just going to export that. I'll export that, and I've got a place here textures. I'm going to call that head diffuse. I've already saved it right there. Okay. Next up is displacement map. Okay. There's nothing in there right now, but you have to understand that um, a displacement map is doing a projection between the lowest subdivision level and the highest subdivision level. It's not reading RGB data like we were with this diffuse. So we have to go down to the lowest subdivision level in order for the software to do the comparison between that and the highest level, which is level 8. If I were to set this at level 4 and then run it, what it's going to do is it's going to create a displacement map based on the difference between level 4 and the highest subdivision. And we don't want that. We want the full spectrum. So make sure you're at the lowest subdivision level and then I want you to turn on adaptive and smooth UVs and then create displacement map. That's going to take about 20 seconds. I'm going to stop the movie while that churns away. Okay, so it finished. And uh, here it is populated in this little uh, tray here. I'm going to say clone displacement map. That puts it over in the alpha here. Again, uh, if I want to flip this thing vertically, I come up here to the alpha drop down menu and I have some flip tools, rotate tools. Uh, I'm going to export that. and call that head displacement. Already got it saved there. Okay, next up, normal map. I want to turn on tangent, adaptive, and smooth UVs. And tangent, in, in case you didn't know, um, if you turn this off it's going to do world or object space normal maps and we want tangent space normal maps. Go ahead and um, Google up tangent space normal maps and look at the image uh, compared to a Google search of world space normal maps and look at the images of that and you'll see the difference um, just spectrums of colors. Okay, Adaptive is going to, um, if you hold the control button down, it says it'll be more accurate in detailed areas. Doesn't say why. I wish I knew why. Okay, Same thing with smooth UVs. It smooths the UVs. How intuitive. So whatever that means, I'm going to use those because it creates a better normal map. And I'll say create normal map. It's going to take about 30 seconds. I'll stop the movie while that cranks. 
Okay, that successfully created the normal map. And I'm going to say clone normal map. That goes over to this tray over here, and we can either flip it here or not, and then I'll export it. And I already have that saved as head normal. Okay, so we've got all three of those textures created. And just as a, re a reminder, the displacement and the normal map are generated using projection techniques. And the diffuse, this map here, is just simply recording what was poly painted on the surface of, this, of the sculpt. Okay, so we can turn that off. Turn that off. Turn that off. And now let's talk about ambient occlusion and cavity maps. So let's turn this stuff off and let's go to masking. And masking for the, the cavity, it's fairly easy to do. It's not that computer intensive. I can go up to the highest subdivision level and go to cavity. And I'm going to set an intensity, say a 25, and hit mask by cavity. And um, I can't see anything too well because I've got the poly painting on. If I come down here to poly paint and I turn that off, you can see that, that mask turned out fairly well on the hair. Um, not so visible on the stubble. So what if I come back up here and I go clear and I make this 50 instead? Now I'll hit mask by cavity, see what we get. Okay, it's a little darker. And now I, ha I hit create alpha. And that's going to take, again, 30 seconds to a minute to create. I'll stop the video while we wait. Okay, that successfully um, was created by virtue that here it is over here in the tray here. Um, it's in the alpha tray, not the texture. So we would have to come up here to flip it vertically if we wanted to. I'm going to export that. And it's called head cavity. Okay, next up is the ambient occlusion. I'm going to clear the mask. Another way of doing that, if I didn't want to press this button here and I wanted a hot key, I could hold the control button down and just draw a rectangle in negative space. That clears a mask. Turn that off. Now, ambient occlusion. Real briefly here, let's go to control panel. And let's see, let's go to system right here. And I want to show you what kind of computer I'm running here. It is a fairly modest 64-bit uh, operating system, 8 gigs of RAM. It's an i7 quad core at 3.4 gigahertz. I'd say this is a middle of the road machine, maybe not even that high, middle low machine. So the reason why I'm showing that to you is so you have an idea of what's happening here uh, when I go to level 8 and I press mask ambient occlusion. And um, if I press this right now, I'm going to get a progress bar that's going to say 543 minutes to completion with a fairly high risk of ZBrush crashing. If, you, if you've used ZBrush for any length of period, you know that it's prone to crashing when you when you um, really put a load on on the computer. I I have uh, 3D Studio Max running. I've got Photoshop running. I've got Mozilla running. So um, you know there's a lot of stuff going on, and this computer just can't handle a level eight ambient occlusion. And frankly, when I go down to level seven, it can't handle that either. It can't handle a level six. The best ambient occlusion I can get is going to a level 5, pressing mask ambient occlusion. Here's my progress bar going by. You can wait for that to finish. It made a mask, you can't see it very well. I'll say create alpha. And there it is, it's in the tray. It's not that great. Um, I'm going to export this. Call this head ambient occlusion. 
and let's look at that in Photoshop. There it is. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see it. And maybe image um, adjustments. Oops, sorry. Uh, rotation, flip vertical, flip horizontal. So I really don't think that's anything to write home to mom about. And I would like a higher quality ambient occlusion. So here's what I want to do. I want to set up a projection in 3D Studio Max. And so I've already got it set up. Um, let me go back to ZBrush real quick. This is the level 5 head. If I go up to level 7, I have 2.8 million polygons. If I go up to level 8, that's 11 million polygons. And frankly, I can't export an OBJ out of ZBrush with 11 million polygons. The most I can export without the thing crashing is level 7. And then, of course, it's fairly easy to go down to level 1 and export that one. There's only 717 polygons in that one. So, for the purposes of this demonstration, here in 3D Studio Max, I've got that set up. I have my level 1 head and my level 7 head already set up. And what I'm going to do is make a ambient occlusion uh, pass between the two. It's, I'm going to have the level 1 head selected like I do now and let's do a projection. So if I press 0 that's the render to texture hotkey. Software has to catch up here. Might be useful for me for for me to close out this other software I have running in the background. I'm, even cl I'm going to close ZBrush just so I can free up some computing power to do this render to texture. So, okay, what I want to do is in output, tell it where I'm going to place it. And, uh, you know, I'll just put it someplace that I, uh, that I normally do. Okay, we'll put it there. That's where the output is going to go from this render to texture pass. I'm going to skip these render settings for now. And um, I've got nothing selected right now in my viewport. There, there is no model selected, so um, I don't want to run the risk of selecting the level 7 head. Um, so I'll go over here and select the level 1 head, and notice how that populates this uh, window with the level 1 head. We'll make a padding of, say, 3, and we want to do projection mapping, so I'm going to enable that. And We don't want the sub-object level, um, and I'm going to pick it's going to pick the source object and that's the level 7 head. So now we go and we say level 7. And what that does is that puts the projection modifier on the level 1 head and when this thing catches up I need to go open up that modifier and, and make some setting changes. So let's wait for the software to catch up. I'm going to pause the video and there it goes. So see this blue cage? Um, I need to adjust that. So I go to cage and I want to press, uh, I want to open up the cage rollout over here and I'm going to say reset. Okay, so now it's flush with the, z the level one head and I'm going to push it out a little bit maybe that much and that's probably too much why don't we back that off I'll hit reset again what does point zero one do for me too much reset how about point zero zero five half of that so that's just enough to come off the surface of the level one head and enough to catch the volume of the level seven head maybe we're gonna have some penetration here 
Uh, why don't I reset that and make that 0 0.007? It's just slightly larger. Then I'm, I'll just handle some of that penetration. Yeah, I feel like that's a, that's pretty good. All right. So we've set the cage up. Let's go down in our settings a little bit more here. We need to add our output. What are we doing here? Well, we are doing we are doing ambient occlusion, and it looks like I don't have the correct renderer set up right now. I need to have um, uh, a different renderer, so I'll hit cancel here. Let me go to um, render setup. Click on this tab here. Go down to the very bottom and assign renderer. And the default scanline render is selected right now. Well, what I need is mental ray. So I select mental ray, hit all right. And then we can close that. And then when we press add, I get ambient occlusion. MR stands for mental ray. I'll press add. And now we need to tell it what's the output. It defaults to 256. Well, I don't want that. I want 2048. All right. And um, what's our target map slot? I'm deliberately leaving that blank so that it doesn't put the results in a target map slot. I don't want it to create a shader ball. I just want the map. Okay, so I'll, I'm deliberately leaving that blank. And then samples. This is the number of rays um, that are coming in and bouncing around and, um, and giving the quality of the ambient occlusion. I am using 2.8 million polygons for my level 7 head. 16 rays is quite a bit. I'm going to try 24 with the idea that it's going to take several hours for this to calculate. Okay, spread, max distance, and fall off. If you go to help the help files, and let's just do that real quick. Open up the help files, and I'm going to type in baked element, um, render to texture or baked element. Let me get to the help files here. I'm going to wait for that to load. Okay, so uh, I got the help files up. I went into the search. I typed in baked texture. And then baked texture elements, 224 is the one I want to double click on. And we can scroll down here. And this tells us spread, max distance, and fall off. This gives us a visual indication of what those settings do for us. So I strongly recommend you to RTFM, go to the help files, baked texture, baked texture elements, and learn about the different settings here. All right, enough about that. Um, now, we're ready to roll here. We've got our cage shut up, set up, and um, let's see, output into source or save source. I don't want to create a shell, so I'm just going to say output into source, and then automatic mapping. Um, I, I don't want to use al automatic mapping. I want to use the UVs that I created. So up here, I want to turn off Use Automatic Unwrap, and I'm going to say Use Existing Channel. Um, the last thing I would want Max to do is, is create fractured UVs to put these results on, um, and I want to use the UVs that I, that I brought in. All right, so by virtue of me turning on Using Existing Channel and Mapping Coordinates, this does not happen. It's not going to do any automatic mapping. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to hit render. And uh, because I did not identify a target map slot, remember this right here? I get this error. Whatever. Hit continue. And now this is going to really take a long time. So this is where I pause the video, let this thing cook, and when I come back, the idea is it'll be done. And I'll show you the results. Okay, folks. So after about two hours of computer processing, time this is the result in the r in the render window and you might say to yourself that's not what I want that's not going to be very useful and you're right because you can't trust what you see in this render window what you really want to do is follow your output path where you you place the output here and this winds up being the name of it right here level 1 head ambient occlusion underscore MR and it's going to be a TGA because that's the default. So you go to that path. Um, in my case, this is what the name wound up being. And I open it up in Photoshop. And here it is. And so if you compare this to what we did with that level 5 
projection that we did in ZBrush. Um, remember we did um, a level 1 to level 5 projection? Image, rotation, vertical, image, horizontal. So this is the ZBrush output. And this is the 3D Studio Max output. And I'll let you decide which one is higher quality. In my opinion, it's this one over here. So this is the, what I'm going to dump in and composite in my uh, Photoshop Diffuse. And we did that by doing a projection map in 3D Studio Max. OK, so the next video is going to be how to composite these textures in Photoshop. Thanks for watching.